Arthropoda. We already finished the general characters of Arthropoda here now. now in today's class, we shall talk about uh, the classification part of the Arthropoda. The most important points with regard to the classes of Phylum Arthropoda. Now, Phylum Arthropoda is divided into subphyla, subphylum trilobita, subphylum chelicerata, subphylum mandibulata. They are the important subphylums under phylum arthropoda. Now, trilobita, trilobites are extinct. All of them are extinct. They lived during Ordovician period. They lived during Ordovician period. Body is divisible into head or cephalon, abdomen. or pygidium head or cephalon abdomen or pygidium now the abdomen is divided into three lobes by two longitudinal grooves two longitudinal axial grooves divide the abdomen or pygidium into three lobes that's why they are referred to as trilobites now trilobites head or cephalon has a pair of multi segmented antennae a pair of multi segmented antennae usually the antennae in all other insects are three segmented with scape pedicel and flagellum whereas in trilobites it is multi segmented here then all the appendages in trilobites are biramous all the appendages are biramous all appendages in trilobites are biramous then they have got a larva called triarthus. The larva is called triarthus. Larva of trilobites is called triarthus. Then examples for this trilobita are dalamnitis. Dalamnitis is an important example for trilobita here now. This is all about trilobita. Then next moving on to chelicerata. Now subphylum chelicerata. Body is divisible into prosoma and opistosoma. Body is divisible into prosoma and opistosoma. Opistosoma is in turn divided into mesosoma and metasoma. Prosoma has six pairs of appendages. The prosoma is with six pairs of appendages, a pair of chelicerae and five pairs of legs, five pairs of legs. Now body ends with a telson that is metasoma ends with a telson, metasoma is with a telson. The unique characteristics of chelicerates are absence of mandibles, absence of true mandibles and antennae is one of the unique characteristics of chelicerates. You know. They do not have mandibles. You know. Instead of mandibles, the chelicerae act as mandibles you know, and antennae are entirely absent. You know. Chelicerates may be marine or um, terrestrial. You know. Okay, some of them are marine and some are terrestrial. Then chelicerata is divided into two classes. Class Xiphosura, class Arachnida. Class Xiphosura and class Arachnida are the important classes of subphylum chelicerata. Now the Xiphosurans all are marine most are extinct here now represented by only three living genera represented by only three living genera 
and uh, xiphosphora body is divisible into prosoma which is six segmented opisthosoma which is 13 segmented opisthosoma which is 13 segmented opisthosoma is again divided into mesosoma and metasoma mesosoma and metasoma now prosoma is covered by carapace prosoma is covered by carapace a shell called a shield like shell called carapace the best example for xiphosphora is limulus you know so in limulus the entire prosoma is covered by a shell like structure called carapace you know with a pair of compound eyes and a pair of median eyes it has got a pair of laterally placed compound eyes and a pair of median eyes the prosoma has six pairs of appendages a pair of chelicerae four pairs of walking legs and a pair of pusher legs a pair of chelicerae four pairs of walking legs and a pair of pusher legs are confined to prosoma region then mesosoma mesosomal appendages are modified into genital opercula mesosomal appendages are modified into genital opercula and five pairs of book gills five pairs of book gills now this is the most important point m set point of view and even other all the other exam point of view also the respiratory organs in xiphosurans that is limulus are book gills you know then metasoma ends with a telson metasoma ends with a telson then the excretory organs in xiphosurans is by coxal glands excretion is by coxal glands excretion takes place by coxal glands the best example for xiphosura is limulus this limulus is commonly called king crab or horse shoe crab king crab or horse shoe crab is the most important point again m set point of view ap mt and all other exam point of view you may get a question based on this common name king crab or horse shoe crab and it is the another important question here now it is the living fossil of phylum arthropoda living fossil of phylum arthropoda living fossil of phylum arthropoda here is all about xiphosphora you take arachnida class arachnida includes scorpions spiders ticks and mites it includes scorpions spiders ticks and mites you know even in the arachnida also body is divisible into prosoma and opisthosoma prosoma is six segmented opisthosoma is 13 segmented opisthosoma is divided into seven segmented mesosoma and six segmented metasoma prosoma is with a pair of preoral chelicerae a pair of postoral pedipalps and four pairs of walking legs a pair of preoral chelicerae a pair of postoral pedipalps and four pairs of walking legs you know then the mesosoma region big scorpions you know second mesosomal segment ventrally second mesosomal segment ventrally pair of pectens are present comb like structures called pectens are present ventrally on mesosomal segment here now and they are tactile in function the pectens are tactile in function then mesosoma four pairs of book lungs are present the respiratory organs in scorpions are book lungs you know so the remaining segments you find about four pairs of book lungs you know 
then metazooma ends with a telson the poison gland is present towards the tip of the telson you know in scorpions the poison is neurotoxic the poison is neurotoxic in spiders if you take you now the poison glands are present in chelicerae you know. the poison glands are present in chelicerae in case of spiders and in case of scorpions you now the poison gland is towards the tip of the metazooma that is telson contains the poison gland and a sting you know the excretory organs in scorpions are coxal glands and malpighian tubules whereas in spiders only malpighian tubules are present so in scorpions excretion takes place by both coxal glands and malpighian tubules whereas in spiders only malpighian spider sticks mites you know only the malpighian tubules act as excretory organs you know all of them are uricotelic however the spiders eliminate nitrogenous waste called guanine you know so in spiders you now the chelicerae are with poison gland prosoma and opisthosoma are unsegmented prosoma can formed by fusion of six segments opisthosoma is formed by fusion of uh, 13 segments but they are unsegmented you know they don't show external segmentation in the opisthosomal region four pairs of spinnerets are present those spinnerets help in weaving the cobweb cobweb is secreted by the epidermal glands of opisthosoma and it is spun in the form of a network by four pairs of spinnerets present in the opisthosoma region spiders are oviparous whereas scorpions are viviparous you know the spiders are oviparous and they lay eggs in the cocoon just like cockroach and all cocoon formation is noticed even in spiders you know now the examples for arachnida we have done general characters of arachnida the most important points i have put before you now i shall give you the most important examples for arachnida androctonus australis Androctonus australis is the most venomous scorpion in world. Most venomous scorpion in world. Palamnius swammerdami. Palamnius swammerdami is the black scorpion. Microbutus pusillus Microbutus pusillus is a small red scorpion small red scorpion Pandinus imperator Pandinus imperator is the largest scorpion Pandinus imperator is the largest scorpion Erenia is a spider Bufilus is a cattle tick Ixodus is a sheep tick Dermacenter is a dog tick Sarcoptes cabi is each might sarcoptes cabi is each might so these are the examples for arachnida androctonus australis the most venomous scorpion in the world palamnius swammerdami black scorpion microbutus pusillus red scorpion arachnia spider dermacenta dog tick bufilus cattle tick ixodus sheep tick Sarcoptes cabi is the each mite these are the most important examples for class arachnida
the mandible eta, you know, subphylum mandible eta, it is divided into three classes class chylopoda, class diplopoda, class crustacea, and class insecta. So, it is divided into four classes, you know, class chylopoda, class diplopoda, class crustacea and class insecta. Now, chylopoda and diplopoda, if you differentiate between both of them, chylopoda and diplopoda, differentiate between both of them, the most important characters. Chylopods are commonly called centipedes or hundred-legged animals. Diplopods are commonly called millipedes or thousand-legged animals. Here, yeah, these chylopods are commonly called trigonathans with the two pairs of maxillae and a pair of mandibles. Diplopods are commonly called digonathans with one pair of maxillae and one pair of mandibles. One pair of maxillae and one pair of mandibles. Now, chylopods are opistogoniates. Opistogoniates with genital aperture at the posterior end. Diplopods are progoniates with genital aperture at the anterior end dental aperture at the anterior end. Now, in chylopoda, only one pair of legs is present per segment. Here, two pairs of legs are present per segment. Two pairs of legs are present per segment. Now, chylopods are carnivorous. They are herbivorous and detritivorous. Herbivorous and detritivorous. In chylopods, you now gnathochilarium is absent. Here, the maxillae are fused to form gnathochilarium. That helps in food capture. Gnathochilarium that helps in food capture. Now, chylopods, poison glands are present. The first pair of legs called maxillipids are modified into poison glands. The first pair of legs called maxillipids are modified into poison glands. And in diplopods, poison glands are absent. Poison glands are absent. Now, in chylopoda, chylopoda here now, antennae are tapered, antennae are club shaped. Diplopods, antennae are club shaped. And the common characters, both of them, respiration is by trachea and in both of them excretion is by malfusion tubules. The examples for this are scolopendra and scutigera and here the examples are julus and spirostreptus. 
Julius and Spiro stepped us are the examples for diplopoda. Let me differentiate between chylopoda and diplopoda. Now, characteristic features of now crustacea. Crustacea it includes prawns, crabs, lobster, shrimps and barnacles crabs lobster shrimps and barnacles you know now the crustacea body is divisible into cephalothorax and abdomen cephalothorax is formed by fusion of five segments and consists of five pairs of appendages you know the appendages of cephalothorax are one pair of maxillae, one pair of maxillulae, one pair of mandibles and one pair of antennae one pair of antinules one pair of antennae one pair of antinules two pairs of maxillae where one pair is called maxillae and the other one is called maxillulae same way one pair of mandibles they have got five pairs of appendages you know that is two pairs of maxillae two pairs of antennae and one pair of mandibles now excretion takes place by green glands which are also called antennary glands and respiration is by gills respiration takes place by gills presence of one pair of gonopores two pairs of antennae are the unique characteristics of this particular group here now. Then they have got characteristic larvae called Naplius, Zoya, Metanaplius, Mysis are the larvae of Crustacea. Cephalothorax is covered by carapace and they are characterized by the presence of even Biramus appendages. Crustaceans are characterized by the presence of even Biramus appendages. The examples, the most important examples for Crustacea are Saculina, commonly called root headed barnacle, or naked barnacle. Number two, Saculina is commonly called root headed and naked barnacle. It is the best example for parasitic castration and retrogressive metamorphosis. So remember, it is the best example for parasitic castration and retrogressive metamorphosis best example for parasitic castration and retrogressive metamorphosis then other examples are daphnia Cyclops, both of them are commonly called water fleas, Lipas, commonly called goose barnacle, Bellanus, commonly called rock barnacle. And another example is palinurus, commonly called American lobster. American lobster. Okay, next is paratelfusa. It is a crab. Also belongs to this particular group. So, the important examples for crustacea. Next, you can write palimen. 
फ्रेश वाटा प्रॉन फ्रेश वाटा प्रॉन सो दिस आर ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट एग्जांपल्स फॉर क्लास क्रस्टेशिया नाउ क्लास हेक्सापोडा दिस इंसेक्टा इज आल्सो कॉल्ड हेक्सापोडा in insecta body is divisible into head thorax and abdomen body is divisible into head thorax and abdomen in all insects you now head is formed by fusion of six segments head is formed by fusion of six segments you now and head has a pair of antennae two pairs of maxillae and a pair of mandibles a pair of mandibles you now thorax is three segmented and abdomen is Eleven segmented in the nymph and ten segmented in adult. Abdomen is eleven segmented in the nymph and ten segmented in the adult. Now, in all insects, you now excretion takes place by malphigian tubules. And respiration is by trachea respiration takes place trachea that open to the exterior through stigmata or spiracles now insecta the eggs are centrolecithal centrolecithal and polylecithal and the cleavage is superficial cleavage is superficial and eggs are centrolecithal and polylecithal you know now the transformation of the larva into adult is called metamorphosis the changes the drastic changes that occur during the larval life which transform the larva into adult are collectively called metamorphosis the metamorphosis you know uh, is of uh, three types holo metabolous metamorphosis holo metabolous metamorphosis is also called complete metamorphosis where the life cycle involves egg egg hatches into larva larva transforms into pupa pupa transforms into imago imago transforms into adult so if the life cycle involves egg larva pupa imago and adult it is called holo metabolous metamorphosis the example for holo metabolous metamorphosis for instance you take house fly house fly eggs eggs hatch into larvae larvae called maggot or gentile the larvae transform into pupae the pupae are called corkate pupae pupae transform into engwans engwans into adult so in house fly you find larvae maggot are gentile pupae are called corked pupae pupae into imago in maggot to adult which exhibit holo metabolous same way you find mosquitoes mosquitoes also exhibit holo metabolous metamorphosis in mosquitoes you now eggs make a cigar shaped or cylindrical eggs you now or sometimes cigar shaped or cylindrical or boat shaped cigar shaped eggs are present in culex boat shaped eggs are present in anopheles 
eggs hatch into larvae larvae called wriggler the larvae transform into pupae the pupae are called tumblers the pupae transform into imago imago transform into adult these are the phases of life cycle in mosquitoes you know same way you have example silk moth even in silk moth also you find holo metabolus metamorphosis where the eggs you know hatch into larvae called caterpillar the caterpillars transform into pupae called chrysalis larvae are called pupae are called chrysalis or cocoon cocoon then the transform into young ones young ones into adult that you find in silk moth you know even honey bee also the metamorphosis is complete or holo metabolus where the eggs hatch into larvae the larvae are called grubs the larvae transform into pupae pupae into imago imago into adult so like this house fly butterfly mosquitoes honey bees all these are examples for holo metabolus metamorphosis another type of metamorphosis we call it paro metabolus metamorphosis paro metabolus metamorphosis paro is also called gradual metamorphosis in the paro or gradual metamorphosis life cycle involves eggs series of the young ones called nymphs and adult eggs series of young ones called nymphs and adult then examples for paro are cockroaches grasshopper locust lac insect lac insect termites so there are all examples for paro metabolus metamorphosis and you have third type which is called hetero metabolus metamorphosis hetero metabolus metamorphosis is also called incomplete metamorphosis where the life cycle involves egg eggs hatch into the larvae the larvae are aquatic and the larvae transform into adults adults are terrestrial the aquatic larvae are called naiads the aquatic larvae are called naiads examples are dragonflies that belong to order odonata dragon flies which belong to the order odonata may flies which belong to the order ephemeroptera and damsel flies dragon flies odonata may flies and damsel flies belong to the order ephemeroptera So in all of them, the metamorphosis is called hetero metabolus metamorphosis, or incomplete metamorphosis, where the larvae are aquatic, called naiads, and adults are terrestrial. And in some insects, you know, the young ones do not undergo metamorphosis because young ones look like adults. You know, the insects which do not undergo metabolus metamorphosis are called a metabolus metamorphosis, or a metabolans. You call them. A metabolans, 
where the young ones resemble adults do not undergo many changes you know the examples are thysanura thysanura is an order you know example lepisma which is commonly called silver fish thysanura is commonly called silver fish it belongs to order thysanura it doesn't undergo metamorphosis you call it a metabolous insects you know 